Now, my angle tonight is about anger. Yes, outrage. You see, in the last couple of days, we have seen a lot of anger, especially on social media, regarding that 255 billion shilling loan to Kenya from the International Monetary Fund, IMF. I choose to speak about this anger, one, because anger often produces change. But I'm also speaking about it because I believe we are angry merely at the effect, not the cause. We are angry at the end, not at the beginning or the middle. And that, friends, is what we must face tonight. The IMF, in its latest statement responding to this anger from Kenyans, said the controversial loan would be used to balance Kenya's books by beginning a process of paying off expensive commercial loans and replacing them with cheaper ones from institutions like the IMF and from country to country arrangements. So tonight one might ask, where was this anger when this government started its borrowing spree very early on in its first term? Where was this anger when the government raised the $780 million euro bond in 2015? Did we miss the early warning? Where were we with this anger when the same government that had increased the country's debt from a mere $1.7 trillion in 2013 to over $4 trillion in 2017 was being re-elected to lead the country for a second term? That was a 250% jump in less than five years, my friends. But was public debt even an election issue in 2017? Or was our anger more pointedly directed at this or that community or our neighbor who happened to speak a different mother tongue? Where was this anger when members of parliament who had presided over a series of debt-ridden budgets got their seats back? Where was the outrage when the same borrowed money was being swindled and misappropriated with reckless abandon? Which petition did we sign when the Auditor General flagged a loss of 1.9 billion shillings at the National Youth Service? Or when an in-house audit at the Ministry of Health exposed the misappropriation of 5.2 billion shillings? Or when the mobile clinics valued at 1.4 million shillings each was sold to the government at seven times the price and left to rot at an N NYS compound? Where was this anger when the famous chapter 6 of the constitution was mutilated and the national values enshrined in the same document reduced to mere epithets? Did I miss the anger when not too long ago President Uhuru Kenyatta, no less, revealed to the country that some 2 billion shillings was being stolen from public coffers every day? Did I miss that petition? Ladies and gentlemen, I am all for this kind of anger, but let's face it. Why are we troubling the IMF as if they are the ones who came hooking the loans here? Are we not the ones asking for the loans here as Kenya? Yes, I said we because the people running the country did not drop from outer space to take charge of our affairs. We voted. At this point, uh, let me play an undated video that has been doing the rounds on social media, which kind of makes this point better than I could. Uh, I'm gonna Google IMF right now and then get their number and press the IMF and let's give them a call and let's see what they say. Good morning, IMF Security Operations Center. May I help you? Hey, I'm calling about um, a country called Kenya. Hello, how may I help you? Um, it looks like um, that country decided to take a loan recently. Um, our president decided to take a loan, and I was just can calling to cancel uh, on behalf of the uh, Kenyan community. Sir, are you the head of Kenya? Are you the president? Of Kenya? No. Or the prime minister? I'm the citizen of Kenya. You have to speak with your government, sir. So um, you guys can cancel those loans? No, sir, because you are not of authority to do so. Um, they don't listen to us, actually. So I told you guys, I thought I can get help from you guys. 
I'm sorry. It's nothing I can do for you. Have a good day. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. Look, I don't know who that gentleman is, so if he actually called the IMF, but here is the point. The protest against the IMF is perhaps an important symbolic gesture, but it is coming too late in the day. It is backing the wrong tree and it may not amount to much. In my view, the next best chance we have to treat the malady from the roots is at the ballot next year. Just what kind of people will be put in office? What kind of president, parliamentarian, governor will we elect? I know the Swahili people say majuto ni mjuku, meaning that we only regret things after they have happened. But tonight I choose to go with that equally timely saying that forewarned is forearmed. See you at the ballot. And that is my angle tonight. Mm -hmm.